Uh, here for day 11, um, you're going to do this quote-unquote lab for analyzing carbon flux. Uh, we're going to practice with some more database uh, style questions um, that the IB loves, where you have to use some data plus your knowledge of, in this case, ecology and carbon cycling uh, in order to interpret and understand what's going on. Um, so, uh, quick activating of prior knowledge, um, thinking about, I want you to do a little thinking in the analogy that low flux would be similar to having very little homework demanded of you and you complete it all. High flux would be tons of homework is demanded of you and you still complete it all. Um, and these database questions will get a little bit at the imbalance um, where the idea of with this analogy, the rate of homework demanded does not match the rate of homework that you complete. Um, uh, you'll click this video that I'm watching. You will have already done that. Um, and then you'll complete these questions here. Click the link for Oxford IB Biology textbook. Um, and then correct, check and correct your answers afterwards via this answer key. Uh, you just have to go to topic four, pages 224 through 227. Um, it may help actually to do the Bio Ninja reading first and do your notes. So do homework first, then classwork. Or you could try the questions first and then reiterate with the Bio Ninja. Doesn't matter to me, but I do want to show you a couple things from this Bio Ninja page. Um, so the Bio Ninja page, the notes you'll take, uh, talks about the way in which carbon dioxide, well, carbon, can move from one reservoir to another, or from one place in which it is stored to another. Um, I want you to think about photosynthesis and respiration in particular um, for much of these problems. Uh, for photosynthesis, you got to remember that not all plants are photosynthesizing during all times of the year. You got to think about the seasonality um, of when autotrophic, photoautotrophic organisms are actually going to be actively fixing, pulling carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere or out of the water and incorporating it into molecules of glucose found within those living organisms. Whereas at all times of the year, those same plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, they are respirating and uh, undergoing cellular respiration, which releases carbon from molecules um, like amino acids, fats, and sugars into back into the atmosphere or into the water as carbon dioxide. So again, seasonality of when you would expect to see photosynthetic organisms active, where in the globe, when, over the time scale. The other one on here that's probably the most relevant, and I can't remember whether these problems deal with it or not, but is combustion. Um, so thinking about human combustion of fossil fuels, when and where they would be doing this. Um, when, maybe not as relevant, certainly where um, you would expect to see a big difference in um, carbon dioxide given off from combustion in, say, the continental United States compared to the Arctic. Um, but again, I'm not sure if that's in these problems. I know a big piece of the problems that I've given to you are have to do with the timing of photosynthesis. Um, and how long it would take to actually make a change to an atmospheric reservoir of carbon. Uh, last thing I want to just walk through is this uh, visual uh, for carbon flux between the different uh, reservoirs. Um, first up here on the top where my cursor is, is the atmospheric reservoir of carbon, mostly carbon dioxide, but some methane um, dissolved into the gases uh, you know, in and around us. Um, that can flow into our terrestrial ecosystems, land biota, bio life, so all the living organisms on land, plants, animals, fungi, bacteria, protists, uh, name it, it's there. We are made of carbon um, and stored in the soil, all the dead and decaying matter that is in the soil. Um, that flows in and out of the terrestrial ecosystems. Um, in photosynthesis, out cellular respiration, generally. Um, but we also have a very slow trickle into the fossil fuel shale reservoir 
Um, and at this point in our time on Earth, we have a very large outflow from that fossil fuel, um, that extraction and combustion of those, of that traditional sink. Uh, we say the word sink when we're thinking about there is more carbon flowing into than out of that reservoir. Um, fossil fuels used to be a sink. For billions of years, fossil fuels were a sink of carbon. They are now not a sink. They are very much the opposite of a sink. Um, the other side of here, very similar to the terrestrial ecosystems, is just showing the ocean um, or aquatic ecosystems storage of carbon in the surface in deep oceans as a little bit of carbon dioxide and probably more commonly, um, definitely more commonly, your uh, bicarbonate ion, um, HCO3 minus, um, as well as within your ocean life. Um, some of that, all the discarded shells from mollusks and all the old ground up skeletons um, from coral can get made into sedimentary rock. And we do release a good amount of that at this point for our production of concrete. Anyways, that is all I've got for you today. Head on back over to the plan and go ahead and try your hand at those um, textbook questions. Write them out on a separate piece of paper. Don't just answer them in your head. Um, talk to each other, get each other on FaceTime and talk through any questions you don't get before giving in to the answer key if you can. Um, these are challenging, but well within your scope. Um, I'm proud of all the work you guys are doing while we're not at school. Thank you for staying engaged. Adios, everybody.